Now, groups seeking to stop the government's HS2 high-speed rail link from London to Birmingham are taking their fight to the High Court today. The first of a series of legal challenges to the £34 billion project will begin today and could last for several days. And if the challenges are successful, the government just might have to run its consultation process once again, potentially delaying the project by up to two years. Well, Ender Brady uh, joins us live from the court. And uh, Ender, tell us more about uh, who the groups are and what their specific objections are. Well, Dermot, this is day one of a massive legal wrangle between the government and all those campaigning against the proposed new high-speed rail link. A total of five judicial reviews will be heard here over the course of the next seven days, and the case started 15 minutes ago inside Court 3. We can look now at, at why they are here today. A phase one of the line, which is being challenged in court, will run from London to Birmingham. Now, more than half of the 140-mile line will run through tunnels or deep cuttings, but will affect homes in some areas. Now, a group of councils along the line, such as Oxfordshire, Warwickshire and Buckinghamshire, are challenging the ruling as they claim houses along the route will drop in value as a result of this scheme. They believe the government compensation scheme put in place is not sufficient to cover their losses. And environmental campaign groups are also launching legal challenges which, if successful, could delay this project by up to two years. I'm joined by one of those campaigning against them now, Richard Houghton from HS2 Action Alliance. Richard, how confident are you? Where is this going to go? Um, well, the, all of our legal cases have already been tested by the judge to see that they were fit to come to court. So we're confident we've got solid cases uh, and we're hoping of a good hearing and we're confident that our um, evidence is solid. But the government's view is that this simply has to go ahead. A massive investment, £32 billion. Business needs this, the economy needs this. I think if we thought it was going to help the economy or it was going to help the infrastructure network, we'd be right behind it. But the £17 billion for phase one alone, it's going to suck money out of the rest of the train network. And also the business case has been forced. They've tried to make it stack up, so they're suggesting people don't work on trains to make the numbers stack up. It simply isn't at up. What do you say to the accusation that this is classic nimbyism not in my backyard? Again, most of the people in my organisation are commuters. We're not anti-rail, we're just, we're just pro the right rail system, and this isn't it. It simply isn't. And the impact, we're not ashamed of the fact that our houses and a lot of the businesses on the line are going to be impacted. And what have people been saying on that very point, you know, what, what is the strength of feeling? The strength of feeling is very high. We raised £300,000 in seven weeks from individual donations to make sure that we could bring these additional reviews. And by our calculations, there are 170,000 properties within one kilometre of the line and we think they're going to lose a value of £25 billion. And this is, this is through no fault of their own, this is just hard-working taxpayers who are going to lose out. Now, you know this government's on a tight deadline with all of this, but your game plan just seems to be to, to drag them into this legal quagmire. I think it's, it's just what's available to us. Um, we had a consultation, 90-odd percent of the people said we didn't want it, it was ignored, so we're left with legal uh, approaches. Look at the West Coast Main Line, though. The judicial review around that brought by Virgin worked, and it, and it, and it got the right result. So we're confident that we'll, uh, we'll get the proper hearing. Okay. Richard Houghton from HS2 Action Alliance, thanks for your time. Five judicial reviews being heard here, Dermot, over the next seven days, uh, the results of which probably will come early in the new year. OK, and uh, thank you very much indeed.